Welcome to Man on the Street, brought to you by Screenlit. When you need inside power on the outside, check out this amazing new product at ScreenlitPower.com. Well, in our last segment of Man on the Street, we were joined by two great guys from Manchester, England, the boys from When in Rome, UK. And today we're joined by another musician, a drummer from that area. He came up in the Manchester scene in the 70s and 80s. He's most known for his time in the British band The Fall. He was in that band from 86 to 97. He was also in a band called The Patrol, which was an early incarnation of Stone Roses. And believe it or not, he was the first person to record drums with the legendary classic alternative band The Smiths. I want to welcome Mr. Simon Wollstonecroft to Man on the Street today. Simon, how are you doing across the pond there in the UK during this pandemic? Hi, Jamie. I'm doing great, thanks. Apart from I need my hair cut in and get back in the studio with these drums behind me. Um, I can't come soon enough, but otherwise I'm doing fine, thank you. Yeah, I love the drums. Looks great. Well, listen, let's get right at it. I know I read that you were influenced by, you know, 70s glam rock, bands like T-Rex and, of course, punk rock, and that you're into uh, funk music, and your friend Johnny Marr calls your funky side, so... I just want to talk about you break it down your life real quick because your your career in music is a journey that's unbelievable and your resume is I mean stands up against anybody. So please break it down for us. The bands that you okay. were in and the artists that you performed with. Okay, well I've been very lucky. Um I went, when I went to school aged eleven to Altrian Grammar, that's where I'm from, a market town just south of Manchester. I met future Stone Roses singer Ian Brown and future Stone Roses guitarist John Squire. And we went to see The Clash in 77 at the Apollo in Manchester. Couldn't believe it, it was so exciting. And after that, I just wanted to be in a band and that was it. And so did the other two. So we did a few gigs with them. Before they became the Stone Roses though, I'd met Johnny Marr and Andy Rock from The Smiths and was in a band with them called Free Party for about 18 months, looking for a singer. We couldn't find one. Johnny then found Morrissey, changed the name of the band to The Smiths, and asked me, well, uh, uh, what wanted me in the band, basically, on drums. I wasn't too keen, though, when I met him. I didn't like his voice, for one. I just didn't like the cut of his jib, if I'm honest. And uh, I just said, thanks, but no thanks. Which, you know... But financially, not a good um, decision, really. Shortly after that, I joined up with Terry Hall from the Specials briefly and his new band, The Colour Fields, did a brief stint with him. Then I was in a three-piece garage rock outfit called The Weeds, uh, who Marky Smith from The Four took on tour and he asked me would I join the band. He just kicked out the old drummer um, from The Four. I said, yes, all right. And that was the next 11 years. After that, I rejoined up with Ian Brown again uh, when he went solo uh, in 19, well, 1999 and played on the Golden Greats album and co-wrote the music for Golden Gays. Unbelievable. Unbelievable stuff going on there. Wow. So, listen, tell me real quick about, um, because we, we're here in the U.S. and Canada, about uh, you know touring the U.S., uh, I talked with you and you said you did actually tour in Detroit here, where uh, Man on the Street is based. Uh, tell us about a little bit about touring here. Yeah, well, um, I've been with both in and the Fall, but mostly the Fall. We became on six tours we did nationwide. Fantastic, love America. Did it in jets and a little um, a tour bus as well. Um, played LA. And uh, Kurt Cobain was a massive fan of the four. Don't know whether you know that. But he turned up at the gig, at the Whiskey on Sunset, and uh, basically he wanted the four to go on tour with Nirvana. I think it's 1994 now. So it's just before he tragically lost his life. But uh, he tried to get on the tour bus with Courtney Love. And Mark Smith, the singer from the four, he said, Tell them to piss off, they're not coming on. <laughs> so, so that was one story. But I've been up to your hometown, Detroit, a couple of times, 
St. Andrews Hall. Do you know it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Downtown Detroit. Know it well. It's a nice... Is it still going? Oh, yeah. I just was there uh, this past year for Peter Murphy, The Damned. They're still playing. Okay. Well, we played there a couple of times. Great venue. I really like Detroit. Um, I love Motown. Uh, I, should, I should have gone to the Motown Museum while I was there, but I didn't. I was too busy driving around doing special shopping for the tour and the outskirts of the city. But uh, yeah, New York. I love New York too. Uh, I love it all, America. I can't wait to go back again. I still go and visit Andy Rourke, a uh, Smith's bass player, from time to time because he lives there now. Oh, wow. Exciting. So, okay, I don't want to let you go until we talk about your book, your memoir. So we'll bring it up on the screen here, the cover. It's called You Can Drum But yeah. You Can't Hide. Tell us about your, your memoir here. Uh, there you have it. Okay, tell us about yeah. this memoir and how people can get it and, you know, when it came out originally. Okay, it came out about four years ago. And, uh, well, you get it on Amazon, of course. And also, if you have a look at my YouTube channel, Simon Wollstonecroft, with one O, there's lots of little clips, video clips of stories from the book, so it'll give you an idea about what's in the book. But I'm very honest in the book, the highs, the lows, the, the girls, the drugs, it's all in there. A lot of names you'll recognise, if you like the Stone Roses, the Smith, the Fall, New Order, even Oasis. I was asked by uh, Noel Gallagher at the Hyatt on the sunset. You don't fancy being in the band, do you? When he got kicked out, that drummer, the recurring theme, theme this with drummers. But uh, <laughs> I couldn't do it because I was with the fall at the time. It was a bit embarrassing. Great. Okay. It goes right up to today. I mean, a new, uh, couple of bands, Dub Smugglers, great bands, a bit like Sly and Robert, and uh, <laughs> San Pedro Collective. Uh, been with them since last year. Well, it's all locked down, isn't it? So sooner the better it opens. It will do. I think the light's at the end of the tunnel, I think. But it might not play till next year, maybe. I don't know. So we're just going to do... Wait, we're waiting for the studio to open, really. It's not the same playing on them, you know, on a screen with other players. I think you have to be in the room with them, really, yeah. to appreciate it. We definitely need live music to come back. You know, and Simon, I got to tell you, you have lived the life that the everyday <laughs> Joe just dreams about. And God bless you for that. And you know what? When live music comes back, please come to Detroit area. We got the Magic Bag Club for that uh, venue down the street here in Ferndale, Michigan. And then we have St. Andrews downtown. It's a great venue. I'd love to have you come again, you know, get a date going play some amazing drums again here, and then afterward we'll go out to the pub and have a few beers. What do you say? That would be cool, Jamie. I'll hold you to that. I'd love to go back to Detroit and have a proper look round, you know, instead of just the hotel. Yeah, there's a lot to know. Yeah. It's a great place. Thanks for the invite, mate. I'll, I'll be over when it's when we're ready. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much, my friend. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Simon Wollstonecroft. The name of the book is You Can Drum But You Can't Hide. Check it out. You can get it on Amazon. Thank you, my friend. Have a great summer over there That's in the good. UK. We hope to see you soon back here in the States. Great. Good luck. Lovely to see you. Take care. Bye. <laughs>